All right, so this is something I've been waiting for quite some time now, which is hosting your own private documents to GPT. So let's check it out. So this is much like OpenAI's playground where you can upload uh, documents over to ChatGPT and then have it analyze the file and ask it questions and reply to whatever you want from your source material, which is your document. But this is actually hosted locally on, well, my machine over here and it's kept private. So you're not actually uploading your data to, you know, OpenAI or some other website. Now, what we're going to be looking at is private GPT. It does have its GitHub and everything. So we're going to go down this document real quick and it's still using Llama CPP. So if you watch some of my previous videos on uh, GPT chatting and all that stuff, it's mostly based on Llama CPP. And um, if you had that installed, that means that this is going to work. So we're going to be installing this on Linux. You can install this on Mac or Windows if you have Python installed, but mainly I'm going to go through this with Linux. And going down this document, you could see that uh, it, actually, it actually could ingest or your source documents could be CVS, documents, uh, Evernote, emails, EPUB, HTML, and a bunch of other stuff like text files and portable documents like PDFs. Um, it's pretty cool how they got everything in, but you do got to keep in mind that it does have a maximum of 500 tokens each. So if your file is a little bit too big, you might have to split it up. So if it's got like, I don't know, a thousand words in it and you need to split it up, you can split it up into half. So it's 500 words each. So there is a way to get multiple documents into this database. Also, once you have this information in the database, it gets stored in there. You don't have to reinitialize that same data back into the system. You can add new documents, but the old document will still be there. You can also uh, delete the database folder and then start from scratch again. So if you are getting like misconluded or too much information in one place, you can do that as well. But going down this, it's pretty easy to run. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. So first I'm going to grab this URL right up on top and I'm going to go into my terminal and this is my home folder. So I'm just going to do git clone and then paste that uh, private GPT over here. And then I'm going to change my directory over to private GPT. All right, let me make this a lot bigger so you guys could see. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to list the structure. And the first thing we need to do is actually uh, install the requirements. So you're going to do pip3 install dash r requirements. That's the first step. And I already got a lot of this installed, so I don't have to worry about it. It's going to go by pretty quick. But for you, for the first time, it might take 10 to 15 minutes because it's grabbing all the files that it needs. So that is the first uh, thing that you need to do. Second thing is you have to move the environment, the example environment to ENV, okay? That also includes downloading this GPT model. And you can use different GPT models, but they do recommend using GGML GPT for all dash J. So we're gonna grab this file. And I already pre-did that, so we, you don't have to wait for it. So since we have everything installed through pip, we're gonna make dir called models or model. And we're gonna grab this file and put it in there. So let's just open up a file over here. We're gonna head over, we're gonna go over to private GPT. And actually this does have to be with an S, models with an S. So we're gonna change that to models. And then you could paste the GGML GPT for all dash J. Now, Next thing we need to do, like I said, we have to copy over the examples environment to a period environment. So we're gonna do that right over, there's two ways to do it actually. If you're, from, if you're used to using just the user interface, you could do control H to unhide the folders and rename this to environment. And then here, if you want, you could open Kate and edit it. And this should tell you like the model path. So that's why I needed an S. You could actually change this to without an S. The directory that it's gonna create, which is called DB, you could change this as well. You can change anything you want in this file, but I left everything as default. Now, if you wanna do this through terminal, all you have to do is, like I said, make the directory models, and then you copy everything over, and then you can move the file of example as a ENV. So now that we have everything installed, um, let's take a look at what the source document has. And he has uh, one document called State of the Union. So I'm gonna cat the file, State of the Union. And it basically has a bunch of lines of State of the Union. Now, if I was to load this document in, I would have to do something called ingest. 
So it's this file right over here in ingest.py. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna go into your source document and take the data and put it into chunks and install it or input it into your database folder. So now I'm gonna have this new folder called DB. If you wanna, like I said, start from scratch, you could just remove the DB folder and yeah, that is it. Now I'm gonna try something else aside from using the source document, uh, which is grabbing something off Wiki. Now over at Google, what I'm gonna Google is Juneteenth because we are going coming close to that date and I am gonna look up the Wikipedia for it. Can I just copy this whole thing? Yeah, copy this, all this, grab this. I'm just copying everything. Wow, this is a lot of information I didn't even know that I could just grab. So I'm just gonna grab all the way up to here because th that other information is just C also. So I'm gonna copy this and create a file in source document. And I'm gonna create a new file called juneteenth.txt. Go in there and then just paste whatever I just grabbed. Save it, control S to save. And then now I have a little document. Uh, it's about 28 kilobytes and or kilobits. And then I'm gonna go over to my terminal and then load it as well. So I'm just gonna ingest it. So now even though I have two documents in there, it's gonna know one of them has already been loaded in, so it's not gonna load it again. So it's just gonna load the new document. You see how it says one new document in source directory instead of two, even though I have two files in there? That's because it loaded that new thing. Now to use it, all you have to do is just type in private GPT and it's gonna load everything from the chunks from the database and you could just query it as you would normally query something or ask something into ChatGPT. So what I'm gonna be asking is what is Juneteenth with a question mark. Now this part does take 20 to 30 seconds, even says so in the documents um, for it to load. So I'm gonna go over here and it'll kind of say like it takes 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, where is it here? will take 20 to 30 seconds per document depending on the size of the document. You can ingest as many documents as you want and it will accumulate in the local embedded database. If you want to start from empty database, just delete the DB folder, which is everything I've been telling you earlier. Um, let's see if this is done. Nope, it's still kind of chilling out. I could hear my CPU fan spinning up a little because it's using the CPU. Now to exit this when you're done, you could just type in the word exit. So um, that is basically about it as far as this GitHub instructions but you can load a bunch of data in there. So if you're working on a project and you need to have a different eye, maybe typos or whatever, or something reviewed, or even a resume that you wanna spice up or something like that, you can put everything into private GPT and have it ask for pointers or something. So let's see if this has loaded, yes. So right now it's responding, Juneteenth marks a celebration of honor for African Americans. So it's giving me an actual answer from the data that I put in. And what's cool about this is after the data has been researched and it printed out, it will give me four points of sources. It even says so over here, where it got this information and it coordinated everything to give, you, give me that uh, answer. You'll need 30 seconds, yeah, we read through that part. Once it's done, it will point It'll print out the answer and four sources it uses from, for context. So basically I have my answer up here and this gives me the whole thing about Juneteenth and it gives me a little bit of uh, idea of when it started after January 17th, 1865 and a bunch of knowledge base of four points of data of context that it pulled this information from. And that is it. We basically had it read our own data from this document itself. So if you got other documents that are private and you wanted to analyze or create a summary out of this, whatever you got going on, you can do it now privately without uploading it to some website. Now to exit this, I just hit exit and that is it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little short video. Um, I really been waiting for this for quite some time because I love the fact that I could upload an Excel file or a EPUB you know, of a book and have it give me a summary or something. So I do really like this program and I'm gonna be using this a lot more just to ingest some of the data that I have and see if it could come up with a better summary or better conclusion. So yeah, if you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hacktail it hearts.